with Sam Zell this morning. And Sam, let me, let me, let me transition uh, from looking at oil to the broad economy, the whole expectation that we go into a recession this year. What do you think about that? How does real estate feel well, to you today? Well, I think that uh, the current environment uh, either suggests that we're already in a recession or that we're rapidly moving toward uh, moving into a recession. Um, world trade has slowed down. Uh, the currency issues continue to be uh, all over the place. I mean, you know, China going one way and Japan and the euro going the other way. Um, and the uncertainties of, of this election year uh, contribute to this. So when I look at, you know, the prospects, I keep looking all over the world and all over the United States for demand. And, uh, you know, the demand is pretty weak. And ultimately, uh, you know, recessions reflect, you know, falling demand. Yeah, and, and you've been so smart in the past in terms of cycles by selling at the top. You think markets here are reflecting that, and is it justified? You think these markets keep showing declines in volatility? Well, are I th you a seller? Uh, I think the answer is any day you're not a buyer, you're a seller. So you're a seller. So uh, over the last year, uh, we've just looked at opportunities. I mean, uh, and and said, you know, this uh, this is pretty frothy, and uh, the kind of financing that's been available and the kind of equity that has been available uh, has pushed up asset prices. Obviously, somewhat the result of QE2. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, from our perspective, uh, we look at it and we say uh, we have to, you know, balance both prospects. And at the moment, we're probably more a seller than a buyer. Anthony? You, know, you, you mentioned QE and the Fed and the, you know, the asset inflation. Uh, the, the Fed doesn't have a lot of tools here, Sam, if we go into a recession. So what do you think happens from a policy perspective if we, in fact, do get the data that says blink, blink, recession? Uh, I don't know, okay? I mean, I wish I, if I knew, I'd be rich. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you but, are. I thought you are. <laughs> but I think, I think the, All of our viewers saw that wink, by yeah, the way. <laughs> but, I, but I think the answer is yes. I think the Fed doesn't have a lot of tools, and I think that's going to make it more problematical uh, if we end up in a, in a more difficult situation. Mm -hmm. I'm not predicting a repeat of the big financial crisis. Uh, the banking system is so much better today. I think the overall system is in better shape. Would you break today. up break up the banks here if you had that policy decision? I think that's ridiculous. Uh, I think the idea that we're going to shrink our power in the world. Uh, and Neil I mean, Kashkari just made just, the whole case for it. I understand, and I saw him on the TV. And uh, and I guess the question is, uh, are you talking about what's economically best or what's politically? best. Right. What office and, is he working for and, now? And <laughs> I just, I can't see any thesis under which shrinking America's economic power is somehow or other going to better off the U.S. or the rest of the world. I think that's a good point. What yep. policy would you recommend here? Let's say you could get something passed through Congress or something that the president could suggest. What would you do? Help Back out before. the economy. I think the single most important issue uh, is the entire question of cost benefit. Uh, we've talked about cost benefit for years. People have talked about, well, you know, the cost versus the benefit. The reality is Congress has basically created an arena where they pretend and, you know, like they used to pretend and extend mm -hmm. in real estate and they're now pretending and extending mm -hmm. in the oil patch. They pretend uh, what, that they're solving problems, but they're not. Mm. Right. And uh, so we've had an, you know, part of the reason we have a 2% growth rate instead of a 4% growth rate is because we've had regulation going crazy. Right. And, and extreme regulation. And the fact that these regulation issues are ending up in front of the Supreme Court is not an accolade mm -hmm. to a negotiated bipartisan world. And, and all of the candidates right now have plans, well, certainly on the GOP side, have plans to roll back regulation and to certainly implement tax reform. Donald Trump obviously has been a face of real estate. Have you done deals with him? Uh, I have never done a deal with him, but I've had you know, significant interface with him. What, what do you think about him as, as a candidate? Uh, my only comment to everybody has been, uh, I would never underestimate Donald Trump.
And uh, although Donald is obviously presenting a very different picture, uh, I think he's out there testing his own limits and everybody else's limits. Uh, but he's not a dumb man. Uh, he's been very successful. Uh, he's uh, willing to put himself out there and take pretty extraordinary, extreme positions. Do you Whether think he... that he would follow through on those positions, though, if he no. was actually elected? No. You don't think I don't. Uh, like like I, the ban on Muslims. Well, the the ban on Muslims is is it's been converted to a ban on Muslims. What he said was stop. Take a we time don't know out. what's going on. Take a, Take time, a time out. out. Find out what we're doing and how we're doing it. That's a lot different than the media's ban on Muslims. Okay. All right. Fair so, enough. Fair uh, enough. How about I, this 45 percent tariff on Chinese goods? And then he walked that back too, though. I the think that's ridiculous, and uh, and that would start a, an international trade war. And I think the chances of anything like that uh, are nothing more. Uh, are very remote. And I think these are political uh, presentations, just like you can keep your doctor if you want to. Yeah, all right, we'll talk more about that, uh, <laughs> Sam Zell, with us this morning.